Hello, everybody. I'm coming to you today with my fourth and last daily update of the video game made in a week. That's right, I am done. I've actually completed it a lot earlier than I thought I would be able to. I'm going to show you the game in just a moment, but I want to say that it has like pretty much everything I set out to put into it from the get go. It has different movement patterns for enemies. It has bullets that can be fired from enemies, it has like sort of like precursors to like bullet hell patterns, which you will see in a moment. It has a live system, has a score system, has a graze system. Just has right around everything I set out to include when I started this. So let's take a look. It only takes about a minute or so to play. I have an HTML5 build up on Game Jolt. And we'll just open it up. As you will see, the art is all what we call programmer art because it's made by the programmer and therefore not really good. But let's go. OK, so as you can see, there's a get ready screen. As you can see, and we start off just approaching down the screen. But then they start to sweep in from the sides and oop. These two can follow custom paths. And OK, that was on me. I didn't approach that properly. These come in from the side and they fire bullets down the main center. And then these come down and fire these cross shaped patterns of bullets at me that rotate through the air. And that's about the whole game. I'm going to try and play it again just to beat it. Is that going to try and nail both of these? Nope. Nope. OK. And. Hey, I managed to get through those that time. And as you can see, that's the last bit. Those are all the enemy types that I came up with in first instanced while editing the game. And that's it. So I don't think I did too bad for um, somewhere between like. Somewhere between 10 and 20 hours of work for someone that's still relatively new to the engine. It's like a lot of that time is spent just reading documentation and figuring out how I need to like just apply basic functions in the first place. And I and I was able to implement like all of those different systems and like all those systems are expandable in their own way. So I could increase the number of enemies. I can make longer patterns for like levels and things. And yeah. I don't think I did too bad for what I set out to do. I put it, I managed to make everything I wanted to make. I didn't really want to include any sound effects or music. I didn't want to create high quality art. I just wanted to understand the programming aspect of it. This was also a really good learning opportunity because I managed to learn some cool things about structuring a project that I, and like how I want to move forward when I make projects in the future. I'm going to take a little bit of a break from programming. But there are some like ideas that I've that I've had in this process that I would like to apply to what I do in the future. Number one. First off, I made the game in a week. Don't. Jam. Essentially, what I did was something called a game jam where your task is to create a video game in a short period of time, like a week, two days, a day. And essentially what I did is I did like a, is I essentially did a self-imposed game jam. And that was frustrating for me because it like, it put a lot of stress on me to like try and like make the game in a week in such a short period of time and it turned out I didn't really have to stress out so much about it because 
here I am and I've pretty much finished everything I set out to do and want to move on to a new project. But it put a lot of stress on me. It made me um, made me a little nervous and it, and it resulted in me getting a lot more fatigued when I worked on the project because I had to work on it for a lot longer than I was comfortable with. And I just kind of didn't focus as much on other things that would be replenishing, like reading or doing other things. I'm not saying I'll never do a game jam in the future. Just I want my approach to be different. I'm going to I want to wait till I have more experience because doing that as a newbie and trying to learn all the things that you're trying to implement. It just makes things a lot more stressful and a lot harder. Probably number two. Plan. From. The get go in lots of ways the project was poorly organized and that was very much my fault and i just want to quickly show you the folder for all the files that the game needed so it's right in here trial bullet hell and all of these are the files and you're probably looking at these and saying wow james all these files and you had to work with all of them Surely that must have been a nightmare. Yes, it absolutely was. As you can see, I at one point tried to make some folders to sort things out a little bit more, but that would re involve totally redoing a lot of the file calls and like the like the structure of like dependencies and stuff. So I just kind of quit. But in the future, something I would definitely want to do is institute folders and stuff like that for resources and for files. Just generally planning things out from the beginning so I know how I will organize things as I make the game. And I'll just make working on it, working on it, knowing where things are and what I need to change and when a lot easier. Because just looking at the files, initially it could be hard to tell, okay, what things are like deal with like enemies that follow paths, what things deal with the player and the player's hitboxes, what things deal with the overall HUD or like the main level. And all in all, that could be frustrating. So from so next time, plan from the get go about like some basic organizational procedures, what I'm going to be making, how I'm going to be putting it all together. And the third thing I learned. Is that what I need to do is I need to learn. Structures. Everything, all programming languages have their own sort of like structure, their own sort of preferred styles. And those styles often evolve over a long period of time to sort of like describe how, how is the best way to interact with the language. And Godot has several different styles you can use. And, some, and they can be used well or they can be used poorly. Most of what I did in Godot for this project was a sort of inheritance structure specifically for the enemy types. Here we go. Where I'd have like an enemy basic and then there would be like ones that move, ones that shoot. And then like if I wanted one that would shoot and move, I'd have to think, okay, do what what I have like multiple inheritances? Would I just code it entirely separately on its own? I did an inheritance model, but fundamentally, I didn't do it very well. And that's very easy to do because, again, inheritances, inheritance trees are things you need to plan. So something I need to learn how to do is just like the different way you could do, the different styles that people have used Godot to create systems where you have objects with different properties. Like, like some people say, like, OK, you have one massive parent object. This is one thing that I thought of doing is one massive parent object that I would just call. Enemy, and it would have like built into it behaviors for like. Moving or shooting, and these would just all be built into it. And what I could do is I could make a little child with only some of the behaviors. And then just leave the other ones disabled. 
But an alternative structure that people have talked about is instead like sort of like creating sort of something closer to what I did, where it's like puzzle pieces and you have like a basic item that does the minimum. And then you add nodes onto its children to in to add additional features. So like something could just be like um hang on a sec. I'm trying to find my cursor. There we go. So let's say this was like a crate. Well, you could add a function to make it flammable. You could add like a node that would like ascribe it that property. And that would just allow like some crates to be flammable and some crates not to be flammable based on whether or not they have that property attached. And that would and that would require a lot less coding in the parent compared to this model over here. So that's one more thing I think I just have to do. I have to I have to I can't stress myself out. I can't like jam things into like tight little time schedules. I need to plan things from the get go, which isn't always my strong suit. I need to know how I'm structuring things, what I'm planning to do, what I want to implement. And as far as structures go, I need to learn like sort of like Godot's structures because Godot is unlike anything else I've used before for programming. I need to learn how people traditionally use it, how they define things, how they make things interact with each other. Like, what's the proper way to use signals? What's the proper way to use that inherent system? What's the proper way to sort of like use nodes to convey information? These are all things I need to pick up, and I look forward to doing so in the future. And I think it will really help me improve as a programmer. But yeah. But yeah, I've done the game. I learned a fair bit from it. It's available if you want to go see it. I have a link in the description. I have a link up in the corner somewhere. Yeah. If you want to check it out, go ahead. I had a good time, I guess. Probably going to go on a little bit of a break for anything programming related, but hey, that's life. Thank you all for watching. Have a good day.